This is today's 830 WCCO, The Jack Rice Show. Welcome to the program. It was only a couple of weeks ago that I had Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid on the program. And I asked him back then, and I'm, trying to st- I'm still trying to understand this now. I'm trying to understand when the American people decided to give the Democrats the majority in the House and the Senate, it seemed in my mind that they were doing it for one reason. And that was because they wanted America out of Iraq. And yet we have not seen one single vote that would have driven down that path. I'm now joined by Congressman Robert Wexler, again, out of Florida's 19th District. Congressman, thank you for joining me. No, thank you for having me. I'm trying to understand. I wanted to set it up this way because I wanted to make sure you understood that conversation. And he hemmed and hawed and talked about the reality in Washington. And I thought, wait a second. It's my understanding that the reason the American people went down that path was that thing. There was a bill that just came down, the war funding bill. And what happened? Uh, Well, I'm not going to hem and haw because you're exactly right. The American people uh, gave us Democrats a majority. And one of the things they uh, expect us to do is to begin to end the war in Iraq responsibly. And that's why I voted against recently the funding bill uh, that continues the war in Iraq without any deadlines, without any uh, enforcement of timelines, which would, in my mind, create the dynamic not only for political reconciliation, which is what the surge was supposed to do, but also it would give the Iraqi government a heads up that, hey, they better start taking care of their own country because we're beginning to leave. Uh, Senator Obama has a plan to remove between one and two brigades a month, which would take us out of Iraq for the most part in terms of combat troops in 16 months. Uh, and that's what I think the Democratic Party needs to do. I just wrote a book, Fire Breathing Liberal, where I talk about the need for Democrats to have a backbone uh, to do what the American people sent us to Washington to do. It's not just end the war in Iraq responsibly, but it's hold the Bush administration accountable for all the abuses of power that they have foisted on the American people, and also to bring some sanity back in terms of our economic policy. Well, then explain this to me, and I, and I appreciate, by the way, the, the book and, and what you're trying to say. An additional part of this war funding bill had to do with warrantless wiretaps and providing essentially a free pass to all those communication companies who broke the law. And I thought to myself, wait a second, there is no other direction to go here after this administration for the things that they have done at bare minimum I thought we stood up for the for the concept of law. When I went to law school, when I was a prosecutor, that's what I believed. At least that's what I was told. That's what I was taught. Well, the problem is, uh, you like me, you went to law school, uh, but no, and all. Yeah, yeah good point. I, I agree right with that. Again, and I won't <laughs> equivocate again. Uh, that what we voted on with the FISA, in my mind, was a mistake. I voted against that. Uh, we need to have court review of surveillance. Uh, Everyone agrees that the President of the United States needs to have the mechanisms and the tools to protect our nation from terrorism. Give him all that he needs to do that. But this President, President Bush, has abused again the power that we gave him, and he's surveilling innocent Americans, tens of millions of us, that have nothing, of course, to do with terrorist activity. And this grant of retroactive immunity that you speak about to certain telecommunication companies, uh, I think was bad policy. I'd like to remind people there were some telecommunication companies that did not cooperate in violating the privacy of so many Americans. Those companies should be lauded. Uh, And for those companies who did participate, I would respectfully suggest that in the future uh, they act more carefully. But the bottom line is uh, we shouldn't have to sacrifice the Fourth Amendment rights under the Constitution or any other protection of liberty in the Constitution, uh, while at the same time we can have a very robust anti-terror program. But this president and vice president are are on a power grab that Americans should be very leery of. Congressman Robert Wexler is my guest. The name of the book, Fire Breathing Liberal, How I Learned to Survive and Thrive in the Contact Sport of Congress. Uh, Congressman, I'm curious. 
is it that the Democratic Party, is it that the tent is too big? Is it that they're trying to be so reasonable, they're listening to all views and refusing to refute the ones that are either wrong or simply inconsistent with what, with what they believe to be true? I mean, what, where have they sort of lost that backbone if they ever had it? Um, no, I don't think it's a product of having too big a tent. I think a big tent is a positive thing. It's inclusive, uh, and, and it helps develop a consensus in America. Uh, I think uh, Speaker Pelosi, who I admire for many reasons, uh, when we got the majority, uh, she believed that we could uh, enact universal health care, that we could enact a children's health care program that would help uh, millions of Americans. I think she believed we could begin in earnest addressing the issue of stem cell research. Uh, I think she believed we could, in fact, uh, take No Child Left Behind and fund it and improve our educational system uh, all across America. There are a whole host of things that the Democratic leadership wanted to do with our new majority to help the American people. The problem is that we were not met with a president that was willing to compromise on behalf of the American people, but instead he dug in and became more strident. And in his stridency, he, in my mind, continued and actually upgraded his abuse of power, whether it was firing uh, U.S. attorneys for political purposes, whether it was ordering torture illegally in violation of both American and international law, whether it was, in fact, of course, previously the manipulation of intelligence for Iraq, or whether it was the outing of the covert CIA agent, Valerie Plame Wilson. All of these issues, in my mind, demand a aggressive oversight program, and that's where I think Democrats, unfortunately, have fallen short. All right, Congressman, then let's go back. If that's the case, and we find that we impeached one president, because he was trying to hide the fact that he was receiving oral sex in the White House versus a guy who was bringing in U.S. attorneys or firing those U.S. attorneys for not following his policies, for torture, which the U.S. Supreme Court has called illegal, for Iraq, for Valerie Plame, for what's going on in the Justice Department just yesterday, for warrantless wiretaps, for a whole series of things, then why aren't we going that very same path now? Well, I, I believe that we should, and I have led the effort for hearings regarding Vice President Cheney impeachment hearings, and I created a website, wexlerwantshearings.com, and I think almost a quarter of a million people have signed up. In my book, Fire Breathing Liberal, I have two chapters. Uh, the, the headlines of the chapter, the first one is, He Betrayed His Wife, Not the Country, the Impeachment of Bill Clinton. And then I have a following chapter where it says, he betrayed his country, not his wife. Why Cheney and probably Bush should be impeached? Uh, and uh, I think that says it all. But, but let's be uh, earnest about this. Impeachment is a serious topic. I think the Republicans abused the constitutional process when they impeached Bill Clinton uh, over a, 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 an indiscretion that had nothing to do with the essence of the power of his office. And here we have, as you rightfully point out, a vice president and president who have uh, uh, essentially abused the power of their office in the most serious of ways with respect to, to war, with respect to torture, with respect to the politicization of the Justice Department. We're now finding out that this administration took $2 billion that was appropriated for the war in Afghanistan and may have illegally spent it in preparing for war in Iraq that wasn't even yet authorized in that fashion. These are the kinds of issues the American people, in my mind, deserve to know the truth about. Scott McClellan came before the House Judiciary Committee last Friday and was, in essence, the first administration official to give a glimpse of truth as to how this administration operates, and he provided a damning political assessment of the truthfulness of this administration. 
Congressman, stay with me. When we come back, let's talk more about about that, specifically Scott McClellan. But I also want to talk about drilling off of your coast in, in, in Florida, which the president, uh, many on the Republican side are suggesting we should do. And I guess even your own, or I should say Florida's own governor, is yeah. talking about doing the same thing, or at least hemming and hawing about that. We're talking with Congressman Robert Wexler, his book, Fire Breathing Liberal, How I Learned to Survive and Thrive in the Contact Sport of Congress. Here on the Jack Rice Show, this is today's 830 WCCO.